To open up a debate and conversation about zoos and animals in captivity can be a very brave step for any individual. Each view will give you a long list of facts for and against this practice. The first zoo that opened in the U.S. was in Philadelphia in 1874, and today we take a look at animals you'll more than likely never see in captivity. We haven't traveled to every zoo in the world, so if you've seen one of them in captivity, do share with us in the comments section below. Number 17. The Injury also known as the babakoto, the injury lemur is one of the largest living lemurs. Their head and body length make up around 25 to 28 inches, and they can weigh as much as 21 pounds. These monogamous creatures feed on seeds, fruits, and flowers, and love to communicate by singing, roaring, or other throaty guttural sounds. Native to Madagascar, the injury is said to struggle in captivity due to their diet and that it's not a lemur you will ever see if visiting a zoo. They are also critically endangered. Number 16. The Ethiopian Wolf This rare creature is one of Africa's most endangered carnivores, and they have a lot working against their survival, including disease, development of more agricultural lands, and human settlement. There are only around 400 of them left today. Similar to the size of a coyote, their diet is very specific, which is why you'll never see them in captivity. They eat Afro-Alpine rodents, which you only find in a specific habitat. These wolves only live on seven isolated mountain ranges, with most of them inhabiting the Bale Mountains in Ethiopia. Number 15. The Mountain Nyala The Baobok, or Mountain Nyala, is an antelope that is also only found in Ethiopia. They are only found in high-altitude woodland and are the only species of its kind. First spotted in 1910 by English naturalist Richard Ledecky, the Mountain Nyala males are typically 43 to 53 inches tall and females 35 to 39 inches tall. They have very distinct markings, and only the males possess horns. They're pretty shy creatures and remain elusive to humans. They're featured on the Ethiopian 10-cent piece. Thanks to the high altitudes these creatures like to live, they remain out in the wild. However, due to their dwindling numbers, there are groups in place that believe they should be kept and bred in captivity to ensure their number grows, as they're currently on the endangered list of animals. Number 14. The Hirola. The Hirola is a species of antelope endemic to northeast Kenya and southwest Somalia. They are the most endangered antelope in the world. This rare species is facing huge survival challenges, and to our knowledge, one has not been seen in captivity. This tawny and tan-colored animal has long, sharp horns, and there are less than 500 of them left. They are the only surviving member of the Beatragus genus, and their decrease in numbers was due to a viral infection which saw the demise of 90% of their population. Although the infection was eradicated in the early part of the 90s, the Hirola just couldn't recover. Number 13. Mountain Gorillas Mountain gorillas have been kept in zoos in the past, but it's highly doubtful that you'll see them in zoos ever again. The focus is to keep their population going and try and increase their numbers in the wild. Mountain gorillas are the smallest population of gorillas, with half the numbers living in the Virunga Mountains, located on the border of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, and Uganda. The other half are in the Bwindi Impenetrable National Park in Uganda. They were discovered in 1902, and many factors are to blame for their decline – hunting, loss of natural habitat, and infection. These guys live high in the mountains, but as humans have settled higher and higher, so have the gorillas gone higher and into more dangerous territory. Thanks to huge conservation efforts, the mountain gorillas have steadily increased in numbers. Number 12. The Walia Ibex this intriguing-looking creature is a Walia ibex, an endangered species of ibex. Poaching, loss of natural habitat, and restricted range are contributing factors to their being endangered. To date, no Walia ibex has been in captivity. There are only about 500 of them left in the wild, though, and they mainly live in the Semian Mountains in Ethiopia. They're a member of the goat family and like to live high above sea level and in hot, humid conditions. It must be difficult to replicate that in a zoo or in captivity, so for now, the few remaining Walia ibex roam freely. Number 11. Albatross It would be near impossible to keep an albatross in captivity, which is probably why it's never happened. These birds are more like feathered giants, with their wingspan often reaching 11 feet. They use those wings to catch the ocean breeze and can glide for hours without a single flap. They do sometimes float on the ocean surface, but it can end in disaster when they become dinner for an aquatic predator. They drink salt water and can live up to 50 years. They are most certainly not on the endangered list. Number 10. Swallows Swallows are open to debate, as it's possible to keep almost any bird in captivity, but as pointed out by a few individuals, what's the point, barring human entertainment? 
Swallows are not showy birds. Their plumage is not extraordinary. Their song, nothing seriously special. So instead of keeping them in captivity, rather enjoy them in their natural habitat. They eat flying insects around 400 times a day, so it's a difficult diet to accommodate for in captivity, and they get very stressed out in confined spaces. Swallow numbers have seen a steep decline in the last 30 years. Number 9. Blue Whale Yes, it's an obvious one, but you'll most certainly never see a blue whale in captivity, due to the fact that it's gigantic. The largest animal to have lived on Earth, the blue whale consumes 36,000 kilograms of krill on a daily basis. They do sometimes fall victim to brave sharks and killer whales, and many are hurt when they collide with large ships. Number 8. Liberian Mongoose It's not confirmed, but reports suggest that at only one point in time was there a Liberian mongoose in captivity at the Toronto Zoo, but was never replaced when its time on Earth came to an end. Another has not been held in captivity since. Number 7. Kalugos Although it has been attempted, Kalugos have never survived captivity. Also known as a flying lemur, Kalugos are not actually lemurs, nor do they really fly. What they do have going for them is a gliding membrane which stretches across the greater portion of their body. Biologist Jan Janeka describes it as, geometrically, it has the greatest surface area that you can have between those limbs without actually evolving an entire wing, like bats did. They can glide up to 200 feet, so space could also be an issue in captivity. Number 6. Moles You can imagine any visitor to a zoo seeing a sign for moles, yawning, and moving on to the next exciting exhibit. It's possible the reason moles are not in captivity is just that they're not that interesting. Add to the fact that they're nocturnal, who goes to the zoo at night, and they live underground, well, it's just not worth it. Number 5. The Northern Olingo This tree-dwelling critter is part of the Procyonidae family, which also includes raccoons. They're native to the jungles of Central and Northern South America. Sometimes called cat monkeys, these guys were once kept at the Louisville Zoo, the National Zoo, and the Bronx Zoo in the 1960s and 1970s, but have not been seen since then. Some believe the reason they're not housed in captivity is that their environment is very specific, with tropical, moist forests and persistent fog or cloud cover being their preferred environment. Number 4. Great White Shark there are currently no great white sharks in captivity anywhere in the world. The first shark to be in captivity was held at Marineland of the Pacific in Los Angeles in 1955. Numerous attempts have been made with some sharks not even surviving a single day. A female did manage to survive 44 days at Monterey Bay Aquarium in California, but refused to eat and was let out into the ocean where she lost the battle. There are so many reasons why they don't make it in captivity, including the fact that they need to swim many miles every day. They do get depressed, they lose their appetite, they're expensive as they eat all the other fish, they need a perfect saline balance in the water which humans can seldom replicate, and finally, they're a danger to those looking after it. Number 3. Silky Anteaters These slow-moving animals eat between 100 and 8,000 ants every day. They are also rather fond of termites and beetles, and only live for around two years. They're nocturnal creatures who generally curl up into a small ball and sleep on the branch of a tree. It's their diet that makes them quite tricky to keep in captivity, and although some have been sold to private individuals, it's believed they don't do well in captivity. There is one that is currently at Huachipa Zoo in Peru, but technically he's not held captive. He's a free spirit and wanders wherever he wants to. Number 2. Fairy Armadillo these adorable animals lead a very similar life to our mole that we mentioned earlier, so it's not common to see one of them in captivity. Officially the smallest armadillo in the world, the pink fairy armadillo was first spotted in 1825. They're around 4 inches long and weigh a mere quarter of a pound. Due to their size and the fact that they spend so much time underground, not too much is known about them. People have on occasion caught one of them and brought them home, but they don't survive long out of their natural environment. There was one that survived four years in captivity, but it hasn't officially been recognized due to the lack of scientific information on the years spent in captivity. Number 1. Cockapos If you think saying the name cockapos is weird, then you obviously haven't seen these unusual parrots in real life. They're massive, flightless parrots that are native to New Zealand. Their courtship is called lecking, and they currently live on specially protected islands. On these islands, their nests are safe from rats, stoats, and feral cats, which is so important as they are critically endangered. Thanks to humans bringing in animals not native to the area, their numbers dropped rapidly. 
During the mid-1990s, there were only 50 of these birds left. The transfer of these birds to the islands was a good start, and their numbers have been increasing beautifully ever since. We'd love to hear from you and find out if you've ever seen any of these animals in captivity. Share your story with us in the comments below and subscribe to our channel for more daily videos. Thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs>